Hello, and welcome to Mark's Woodworking Challenges. I'm Mark, your host, and today we have a hand plane challenge. Well, it's actually not a new hand plane challenge. This is part three of a four part series on the competition between a Stanley 41 combination plane and a Stanley 46 combination plane, both of which were made, manufactured in 1876. In the previous video, we tested both of these planes on grooves and dados. In this video, we're going to test both of these planes on rabbits, cross grain and with the grain, and matching. And before we get into the actual performance test, we're going to take another look at the design of the fence and guard gate of the Stanley 46. It's actually way more clever than I thought originally. So let's get to it. Two videos ago, I discussed the design of the Stanley 46 combination plane in detail. Part of that discussion included the fence and guard plate assembly. I talked about how the guard plate removes from the fence when you need to do a dado so that it the, this part can ride on the work and goes back on when you want to use the guard plate to make to do the plowing operation. When it's on like this the guard plate is pretty flush with the surface the machined surface of the fence. What I didn't realize at the time was that there's a second mode of attachment for the guard plate. It, it goes like this, but it also is reversible and mounts like this. Now, you can see that it provides a step right here that will ride on the work when you need to do a use the plane as a filetzer, filetzer plane. So that actually is a fairly clever design getting sort of maximum utility out of a few parts. So once again, just in summary, this way for Filitzer with a step to ride on the work, reverse it, put it back on, I'm not going to tighten it, and you have a surface that's flush with the machined surface of the fence. F fairly freaking amazing. I only came about, I only uh, learned of this because I, 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 I had a coincidental discussion with one of the experts in the field and I'd like to thank him for straightening me out on this uh, issue. Thank you, Don. Much appreciated. Time to make a rabbit. 46 goes first. We're making up a uh, 3 8 inch wide rabbit. Um, that would be a fair, you know, I, I, I pick 3 8 It's a very typical width for most woodworkers, including me. And what I've got in the 46, I've got a 7 8 inch wide cutter. Hopefully you can see it. Four, 7 8 inch wide cutter. And we're only going to be using the first 3 8 of an inch worth of it. And so that would be, 
I mean, I could have picked out a half inch one, I guess, and not had so much sticking out here. So here we go. Yeah. I've in this case moved the depth of, uh, depth stop to the right hand side. And it's just uh, plowing right along. I have a fairly aggressive cut set up as I mentioned last time. And it's not uh, having any problem with it. Okay, very nice. In the previous test of this plane, we did a pretty good job making a rabbit. Partly because it was a fairly small rabbit. And on a small rabbit, you can get away with having the guard plate flush with the fence because on a small rabbit, you can control this motion reasonably well. But once you start getting a decent sized rabbit, you know, you just can't control the tilt. If you go, if you go even a micron this way, that big old cutter just starts to dig into the wood and it goes downhill from there. However, with the guard plate in the stepped, what I'm going to call the stepped position, uh, we're going to say flushed or stepped. So with the guard plate in the stepped position, it's basically just sitting on the board like this. It's resting over here. It's this skate, the main body is resting. And so it's got a perfectly good reference. Ooh, isn't that nice? Fairly thick shaving, but still cutting like a dream. So, voila. And you can light your fires with it. So, there you have it. The, the fairly ingenious design of that fence, guard plate and fence, allows you to cut a rabbit of pretty much any size or shape. Now obviously a person isn't going to want to do you know a one by one rabbit that isn't really very likely but you could do like a shallow one inch rabbit like if you needed to do a Does it get any better than that? And we were cutting a, grab the ruler. We were cutting almost a one and a quarter inch rabbit there. Fairly cleanly and, and pretty fast. Now I will have to confess that it took me about 10 minutes to get the cutter precisely dialed into that slightly thick shaving but in the end it you know it, it turned out well now we'll try the 41 There you have it. That is, they both did really a pretty excellent job. I, I, I couldn't 
honestly say that the quality of the product is any much different but in if we have to declare a winner I'll still go for the 46 simply because not because uh, it made a better rabbit but because the 41 is just more difficult to use the fill the fillitzer bed is is not as practically useful so I'm going to give the winner in this category to the 46. First up, the Stanley 41. Now with its newly sharpened knicker. In fact, I was going to say that the only regret I had about fixing the knicker was that I had to go through yet another 15 minute ordeal of getting the cutter readjusted in this but you know that's the price you pay for having a Stanley 41 with a Philitzer bed okay so I've set this uh, in contrast to the the previous video on the Stanley 41 I've set this for a fairly sizable tenon which is we're at about uh, one and a quarter inches there so that would be that's a pretty decent tenon and we're going to see how well it works Now, because I went for the one and a quarter inches, I think in this particular case, there's just no way you could take a really rank cut with it. So, I've got it set for a fairly average shaving. And you can see that it's doing very nicely and it's looking pretty good nice sharp corner here this time so unlike before with the dull knicker you I was getting a lot of fuzz right here on the corner but it seems to be uh, looking pretty good really so it's a little slow like I say I don't have it set with a for a thick shaving No problems. That's actually uh, that's actually doing pretty decent. Let's try a cross grain rabbit, and I want to do this. I'm doing this immediately after the with the grain rabbit because, frankly, I don't want to have to fiddle with the depth adjustment again, depth of cut. So we're going to launch right into it. And so again, it's crit the, the really key feature here is that the plane is balanced on the work. It's supported on this side, supported on that side, and I try to catch a shaving or two here, but it's doing it's it's really gone to town. Already, holy smokes, isn't that fantastic? And we're down about a at least an eighth of an inch already. Look. 
look at that. And let's look at the final product. We rode up a little bit on this end, so we're going to try to fix that a little bit. Eventually the depth stop would take care of that. And there you have it. A nice square shoulder, no fuzz because the knicker is, the freshly sharpened knicker I should say, is uh, cutting the uh, cross, cross the grain, cutting the fibers ahead of the cutter and it just works like a champ. The next test, and in fact the last test, is on matching. So we already, did, we'll start with the Stanley 41, but we've already seen it once before. So we'll, it actually is, we were pleased with the performance last time. It takes a bit of shaving. You can see I've got a pile of shavings from when I was testing it. Oops, got to clean it. <laughs> I thought it was slowing down a little bit. No wonder. There we go. Got to so already you can see that we've got quite a bit of a tongue formed and so just as good as last time Stanley 41 working fairly well as a matching plane. Let's use the Stanley 46 as a matching plane. First of all some comments about the dimensions of the cutter. I've got here a diagram showing the relative dimensions and you can see that if you're aiming to put a tongue on a three-quarter inch piece of wood, if you register off the fence side and put the fence so that you the tongue begins 5 16 inch from the fence which would be approximately what's required to put the tongue in the middle of the board you see that the other side the main body is 13 16 inch away from the fence so it will not be providing any support while you're making the tongue in the piece of wood on the other hand, if you try to set the fence, it's say you have it in a flush configuration, and you set the fence so that it that the main body rides on the wood, then because of the width of that wing of the tongue cutter, the tongue can't start has to will be starting half an inch from the edge of the board which ends up putting the tongue pretty far to one side of the board certainly not centered at all and so that doesn't seem quite right to me now when I do that it feels pretty tippy to me and not a very smooth I guess you can see a tongue forming there 
I guess that that works that way. So you know, I don't know it it doesn't feel smooth and so it still makes me think that something is wrong but I don't know what it is. So there you have it. Uh, that's that's our Stanley 46 combination plane. Am I going to give that a high grade? Probably not. And you know, for those who are expert out in the audience, please chime in with suggestions. Well, that wraps up part three of this video series. Both planes performed well in the various tests, but I'm not going to summarize any further than that because this video is already too long. Stay tuned for the next video where I summarize the entire series and provide some additional historical um, timeline. So that'll do it for this video. If you like what you see, please consider subscribing, hit the like button, and by all means comment. We'll see you next time on Mark's Woodworking Challenges.